So in this uh, video, we'll uh, be talking about uh, micropipettes and microenvironment. And it's imperative that at this stage in your career that you learn how to prepare a perfect microenvironment because in the, in the world of science, you'll be going into everything happens in 20 and 50 microliters. <clears throat> so on the table, we've displayed the, uh, the main pipetters you'll be using in, in your course. And uh, the first one that we have is a P1000. And at the top of it, you can see the range we can do with a pipette. It will do from 100 to 1,000 microliters. At the midpoint of the table, we have the P100. And it will do from 10 to 100 microliters. And then to the extreme, I guess, at the end of the, of the table, we have the P10, which will do from 0.5 to 10 microliters. Beside each pipette, we've uh, displayed the tips that we use uh, for each of these micro pipettes. It's imperative to use the right tip, otherwise you get the wrong volume. Now the uh, the display is uh, is horizontal, and that's very unusual for pipettes, for this kind of pipettes. Uh, when you finish your work, it is imperative that you leave it in a vertical fashion and for that we have a holder so you take your pipette and simply place it uh, hang it in your holder this way it will allow any liquid that might have gone into the, the pipette will be allowed to drain and it's going to minimize the, the damage to the mechanism So now we're going to look at the range, uh, the maximum volume for each of these pipettes. The P1000 has, be, has been set for 1000 microliters. The next pipette, the P100, has been set to the, its maximum volume of 100. Notice that the yellow bar here is actually a decimal point. And then the P10, we've set for 10. And again, notice that the white bar is the decimal point. Now uh, we're just going to change the change these to their minimum volume and we'll look at them. Okay, so now we've set the, uh, the pipettes to their uh, minimum volume. Uh, the P1000 has been set for 100 microliters. The P100 has been set to 10 microliters and the P10 has been set to 0.5. So remember that the, uh, the white bar or the yellow bar and the P100 is a decimal point. Now the range that you've seen, like if we concentrate on this one, this pipette can do, f do from 10 microliters to 0.5 microliters. It's very, very important not to exceed these ranges because you can very easily damage the mechanism and the pipette becomes unprecise or useless. And each of these units, as you see here, is worth at least $300. Now, now we're going to take a closer look at the working parts of the pipette. I'll take the P1000 to, to show you. And we have to, this, is your, this is your piston, and this is what you'll compress to uh, evacuate the volume that is uh, registered and pick up the sample. Over here we have the dial to change the volumes on the readout, and over here we have the ejector, the tip ejector, when you finish your work to uh, get an appreciation of the working mechanism of these components you should look at the animation and you'll see how it works. Okay so now we're going to look at the uh, mechanism of the pipette. So within the pipette you have uh, two springs in series. Uh, one's fairly soft, one is hard and when you want to take a volume you press from the position zero to the first stage you can press one spring and then if you press a bit more you'll pick up on the resistance of the second spring go all the way down later we're going to look at how we take a sample in this video we're going to look at how we adjust the volume of a pipette
to change the volume you can uh, dial up or down according to the volume you want in this exercise we want to pipette 100 microliters I'm dialing up and when I reach the 100 it's imperative to make sure you, you, you've corrected the fraction to point zero. Now we're going, we're going to adapt the tip and to do it uh, to get a perfect seal you need direct pressure and a slight twist. Now we're ready to pipette. The first thing to do is to adapt the tip you need direct pressure, slight twist to get a perfect seal. Double check your volume. We want to do 100 microliters. So, so we're adjusted to 100. We're good to go. We have water for this exercise. So what we have to do is compress from zero to the first stage. You expel the air from the tip. Now you immerse the tip in, your, in the water. Release slowly to take up the volume. Within the tip you have 100. You, you also have some on the outside. So you need to wipe the outside of the tip to the, to the wall of your um, the beaker. Now we're ready to transfer. Make sure you touch the surface lightly. Then you press from the first stage, from zero to the first stage expelling the liquid and the last quantity in the tip is expelled by pressing through the second stage. You uh, keep it compressed, withdraw, okay, and you withdraw, you only release the, uh, the piston once you're out of the sample. Right. Now we're going to transfer one microliter of a, uh, of a sample so I'm taking up the one microliter. It's important to clean the outside. The sample will be transferred to a 1.5 mil tube. Keep the tip uh, at an angle. Make sure that only the tip is touching the inner surface. Press through the first stage. As you press to the second stage, move away and down, and you get a perfect transfer of one microliter. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can uh, use a rinsing technique to transfer uh, a small quantity in a microenvironment. So you need to immerse the tip. You go down to the first stage, fill back, first stage, fill again. Through the second stage, keep it compressed and withdraw. This way, you've washed your sample in and you've done a quantitative transfer. Now, we're going to look at some common mistakes. And one of the most common things that I see is people creating bubbles in their solution. So, uh, so when you immerse your tip, people uh, compress the air out, creating bubbles. And if this was a protein solution, you'd be creating a lot of foam. And foam means den denaturation. So now we're going to look at uh, another common mistake, is where we transfer uh, more than what you want. I just uh, took up three microliters of a sample. We have three on the inside, we have some on the outside. And If we don't wipe the tip and transfer to uh, our incubation, we'll be transferring more than what you want. So make sure you wipe the tip in the mouth of the vessel, leaving behind the droplets that were outside. And now we're ready to transfer. So if you forget to, to wipe the tip, uh, you'll be transferring more uh, than what you want. You won't be creating the ideal environment for your reaction. And there are instances where you will denature the enzyme.